Like constipation itself, the myths surrounding constipation are a stubborn beast. So let's dispel them in this video. The first myth to debunk is that constipation is not a big deal. Here's a not so fun fact. Second to the common cold, constipation is the second most common cause of unwanted use of PTO. There's something about feeling like you got a stick up your ass that doesn't bode well for a productive day at the office. How could you work well with your boss when all you could be thinking about is taking the biggest dump of your life and the poetic justice of doing it on his desk? Constipation negatively impacts patient lives, and it's not enough to just simply reassure a patient that they don't have cancer, and it's not enough to simply give them some fiber and Miralax. These remedies work for many cases, but if you've ended up in a GI office, there's a fair chance that you need something more. However, it is important to reassure and do away with the myth that constipation is a sign of cancer. This is in fact a benign symptom and it rarely is suggestive of cancer. Now granted, there are rare cases when a patient has a sudden onset of horrible constipation that progresses rapidly and they have a change in the shape of their stool. That's because a cancerous mass is acting like a pasta extruder and only making it so squiggly little rotinis can come out of you. Much more often, thin stools simply means that you need more fiber in your diet, and by doing so, you'll go back to nice fluffy poops. Now going cheek to cheek with that misconception is the idea that you have to have a colonoscopy to evaluate constipation. In fact, in GI guidelines, this is not a reason to have a colonoscopy. In fact, this is often gonna head you down the wrong path and in no way get to the real bottom of the problem. There are much more accurate tests to diagnose the reason for constipation. These are discussed in separate videos and they really get us towards why you're having constipation. Is it because of slow transit or is it because of some kind of outlet obstruction? Which brings us to our next myth. And that is just because you're not having a cancerous mass obstruct your rectum, doesn't mean that there may not be a functional obstruction. What that is, is a pelvic floor dysfunction and that there is a discoordination between the way your abdominal muscles and your pelvic muscles work together to move poop out the shooter. This condition is called dyssynergic defecation. And it's like you're trying to dance with two left feet because your abdomen and your pelvis are discoordinated. It's like clumsy pooping. And that's just not the best way to go about things. Specialized tests and specialized physical therapists can help get all those muscles working back together the right way so you can do -si do on the way to the commode. The next myth is that only women can have pelvic floor issues. This is simply not true as I've seen many men who have pelvic floor issues themselves. It's for different reasons, usually surrounding some kind of chronic musculoskeletal pain, especially those in the lower abdomen and the lower back. While women do predominate in having pelvic floor issues, there's also the misconception that it's women who have given birth vaginally. This is simply not true. Fact is that growing a fetus in your belly and having it lounge in your pelvic floor like it's a hammock for 10 months definitely does stress the pelvic floor. So pregnancy itself, irregardless of how the child was delivered, is a risk factor for having pelvic floor problems. If you have more questions about constipation, check out some of the links below because there's quite a few videos on the topic here on the channel. And let me know what other myths you'd like us to bust. Thank you for watching and be safe.